Republican congressman is defending criticism ahead of the midterms from his own siblings. Lauren Reimer at our CBS affiliate KPHO in Phoenix has the story. Ghost the congressman isn't doing anything to help rural America. It begins like any typical political ad, people voicing their opinions against a candidate. If they care about jobs, they would hold him to account. But as the ad goes on, it's revealed these people are Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar's own siblings. My name is Tim Gosar. David Gosar. Grace Gosar. The six say they cannot stand by their brother's positions on health care, immigration, and the environment. If he actually cared about people in rural Arizona, I bet he'd be fighting for Social Security for better access to health care. Yeah. Democratic yeah. candidate yeah. David Brill says his team reached out to the siblings knowing there was a divide between them and their brother. They love America and they love their family and their family's values and that they feel that our congressman has departed from both. Brill says they told their story willingly. I really have to say these are courageous and principled people. Even endorsing him to replace their brother in the United States House of Representatives. And I endorse Dr. Brill. Dr. Brill wholeheartedly endorsed Dr. David Brill. The first three videos were published online Friday. Well, it did hit with more of a splash than I expected. This is their story in their terms, in, the, in their words. They are doing it for the country. Yes, it is hard for them, and you can see it in, the, in their faces. You can see, hear it in their words. But they care about the country, they care about the people in our country, and what the policies that their brother is representing are doing to harm people. Joining me now are two of Congressman Gosar's siblings. Grace Gosar and Tim Gosar are in Fort Collins, Colorado. Welcome to you both. Thanks for being here. Why did you two decide to speak out against your brother? Um... Elaine, I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity. Um, we decided to speak out uh, to we decided to speak out um, to our brother um, after being patient and and not saying much for better than seven years. And um, we did that really out of deference to Paul's family and uh, our parents. and um, but really felt after what happened in Charlottesville that, how he processed that and what he said about that, uh, we really couldn't agree with. Um, it was wrong and we needed to stand up and, and confront him for that. Um, I, I don't know how much you know about what Paul said after Charlottesville. You have described his comments as, as racist in the wake of Charlottesville. Remind us of what he said and also why it prompted you to go ahead and speak up. And I think there will be some people wondering, Grace, why not have this conversation privately with your brother? Well, I think those are good points. Um, but uh, and to the question that why not have this conversation privately, you know, I don't believe, um, Elaine, that that's possible anymore. Um, he's not returned a text or a phone call from me for quite some time. So there's really not an avenue to do that. But uh, why not have it privately? Um, well, I, I feel like um, in, in confronting Paul um, in this way, uh, we offer a challenge to him that we don't really have in any other way. But what Paul does reflects upon us. And it, it really is quite unfair. It, it affects what he votes for and what he says affects our families. And um, in, in standing up to him, I think we're, we're actually challenging him to be the person that we knew and the person that we grew up with. And really, there aren't any other avenues. And yet, um, you know, today we, we have this with uh, this interview with you uh, by doing it exactly as we did. And can you just it's, remind us what specifically it was um, um, about his comments after Charlottesville that really prompted you to speak up? Well, he um, said that uh, George Soros was a Nazi sympathizer. Um, he said that the Charlottesville white supremacist rally was funded possibly by the left and possibly by Soros. Um, so very inflammatory and um, unbelievable comments and slanderous. He had no proof. He had no um, anything to be able to document it or to be able to prove his position. Uh, how did the campaign ad come to be? What were the origins of it? 
Well, Dave and I, Brother Dave and I, had talked a little bit about what else we might be wanting to do to be able to um, be involved, um, change the narrative, be in part of the conversation. Um, and then um, one of Dr. Brill's staff reached out to Dave, uh, and then this whole process got started. Well, your brother pointed out on Twitter that you both do not live in Arizona, that none of the siblings do. And as some people might look at the situation and say, well, then um, why should we uh, be listening to somebody that doesn't even live in the state of Arizona? Why is it that you should be telling people in Arizona how to vote? Well, um, it's ironic that my brother would say that because he doesn't even live in his own district. Um, his primary residence is in Flagstaff, which is outside of his district, and he's told his constituents repeatedly that he would move, but doesn't. But whether it's Paul or someone else, once they get elected to a federal um, office, whether it be a senator or a congresswoman, um, their votes really impact all of us. And so I think it's fair. Um, for someone from Wyoming to confront a congressman from Arizona about how his votes are impacting all of us, whether we're in his district or not, and whether we're his siblings or not. And I would add to that that um, they get paid out of the U.S. Treasury, and that's coming out of taxpayers' money. So we're taxpayers as well. Well, your brother, Congressman Gosar, responded on Twitter. He said, in part, quote, Stalin would be proud of you for speaking out against him. Your parents told The New York Times that they're Republicans. What do other family members think about your decision to be part of this ad? Well, all I could say is that there are four others besides us. So I think that the overwhelming majority of people support that and are a part of this effort. Uh, beyond that, I would just offer that, you know, we really don't speak for anybody, anyone but the six of us. And so you would have to ask those individuals um, what they think about uh, what's what's been done. We really haven't fielded any commentary from intimate family members mm -hmm. outside of, um, you know, the our, our siblings. I can only imagine this must have been an extremely difficult decision for you and your siblings to speak publicly like this. I thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate it. One popular ice cream.